So in this video, we're going to investigate and look at the changes of states and look at some of the calculations that goes along with phase changes. All right. And so let's kind of just kind of start off with some some context. All right. So when a solid is heated, right? So if we're looking at this solid here and we were to heat this, all right? Um, the molecules will begin to stretch, begin to bend, begin to vibrate more vigorously. They have a lot more energy. Um, they're able to move, move more. All right, and if, if it has just enough energy, all right, then the, um, the particles will start to, to break free from one another. And then the, the process of melting takes place. So melting is the process where a solid becomes a liquid. All right. This process, um, we officially call it the heat of fusion. Okay. So heat of fusion, melting, same thing. All right. Now, if we continue to, um, so basically all the energy that you're adding to it at this point, um, when you're when you're melting it, it's just to able to change the the particles from the solid to a, a liquid. And you know, an interesting phenomenon is that as a substance is going through a phase change, the temperature will not change. All right, its temperature will not change. It's because the energy that's being added to it is just to convert it from a solid to a liquid state. Now, once all of the substances are the liquid, all right, once it's finally now in a liquid state and you're adding energy to this, so we're continuing to heat this up, all right? Um, you're adding energy, it's moving faster and faster and the, the particles are moving more vigorously. Um, and then once it has enough energy that it could break away through the intermolecular forces and what's gonna happen, then you will get it to a point Whereas now it is boiling or evaporating, all right, or vaporizing, really. Um, so when you get to the point where it's boiling, this process, we call it the heat of vaporization, okay? And so during this point, all the energy that you're adding to it by heating this up will really be strictly just to get all the molecules from its liquid state to its gas state. And interesting enough, the temperature will not rise up until all of it um, becomes a, a gas. All right. And so really to get something between one state to another, what it has to do, it has to overcome, especially if you're heating it up, it has to overcome um, the intermolecular forces. All right. Now, if you're cooling something, all right, if you're going this way, what's going to happen is that the intermolecular forces are being reestablished. All right. So going from a gas, you allow it the substance. To, if you take energy away from it, all right, you allow that substance to get slower, slower. And once it gets slower, slower, close enough, the intermolecular forces are going to reestablish themselves to the point that it goes from a gas to a liquid by condensation and then liquid to solid by freezing. Okay. So another way we could look at this is by looking at what we call a heating curve. Now a heating curve basically shows the relationship between the amount of energy added to a substance and the temperature. Okay. And so, um, and different segments of the curve gives you a lot of, um, qualitative data as for what's going on with that substance at that particular moment or when about how much energy has been given to it and at that particular temperature. All right. And so like, for example, if you look at this line here, this very first line here, this often represents that this substance is at a solid form. Okay. Now when energy is being added to it, so here's X axis, when energy is added to it, you notice that the temperature is rising. Okay. And the temperature will continue to rise up until it gets to a certain point. All right. And so this is the certain point here, this plateau. Anytime you see a plateau, this represents that there is a phase change. All right. Now the phase change that a solid will take will go, will go to is it's your melting, right? 
So this temperature here that we see here is your melting point, all right? It's the point at what temperature that that substance will melt. So here, um, I'm really looking to water, all right? So the melting point of water will be at zero degrees Celsius, all right? This point here is what we call the heat of fusion, all right? Or delta heat, the enthalpy of fusion, all right? And so if you notice, as we continue to give this energy over time, all right, the temperature will not rise up until all of the water has gone from its solid state to its liquid state. And then once that happens, then you see the temperature will start to rise. All right, so now at this point, water is at its liquid state and the temperature will continue to rise up until it hits this point here. All right, so when it hits this point here, then we're at what we call the boiling point. All right, what's going on at the boiling point? Once again, we have ourselves, well, at least I'm trying to make this a plateau. We have ourselves a plateau here. Remember, plateau represents a phase change. So we know that we're changing between a liquid state to a gas state. All right. And so this phase change here, we call it boiling, all right? Um, we, and this is your enthalpy of vaporization, all right? So this is at this point where the amount of energy that is needed to get a substance from its liquid state to its gas state. Now, once again, you notice that the temperature will not change up until all the, all the, water goes from its liquid state to its gaseous state and once it's at this gaseous state then the temperature will continue to increase until um, it's it's getting ready for a new phase change all right and so um how do we go about able to calculate how much energy something needs to change phases all right so um I want you to remember Right, the heat of fusion is for melting, all right, specifically solid to a liquid, all right? And then you have the heat of vaporization is for boiling, all right? And so we're talking about from a liquid to a gas. All right, so how do we go about figuring this out? Well, heat, all right? whether it be calories, I'm about to spell calories wrong, whether it be calories or joules, right, is equal to the mass of the substance in grams times the, the heat of fusion, all right, delta H, which the units are typically calories or joules per grams, all right? So the heat that's needed is equal to the mass in grams times the heat of fusion or heat of whatever, um, whether it be cal heat of fusion or heat of vaporization, which is the units is calories or joules per grams. So let's look at an example. Naphthalene, an organic substance often used in mothballs, has a heat of fusion of 35.7 calories per gram or 149 joules per gram and a molar mass of 128.0 grams per mole. How much heat is required to melt 0 0.300 moles of naphthalene? All right, so um, we're trying to figure out how much heat is required. All right, so we're looking, we're searching for heat. All right, and remember heat could either be, depending on the question, it could be either in calories or joules, all right? And so that part's really, really important. Let's, for our purposes, we're just gonna focus on calories, okay? And so we're just trying to figure out how much heat in calories will it take to melt 0 0.300 moles of naphthalene, all right? Now, remember the equation in this case is heat is equal to the mass in grams times since we're, we're melting, we're looking at the heat of fusion. Now, remember that the units of heat of fusion is in this case is going to be calories per gram, okay? 
Now, when we're looking at what's been given to us, we've been given moles, all right? But thank goodness, we also know the molar mass, so we could kind of really just kind of figure this out. We just got to convert the moles to grams, okay? And so let's kind of do this off to the side before we start plugging things into the equation. So 0 0.033 moles of naphthalene, all right? Uh, and we know that the molar mass of naphthalene is 128.0, grams over one mole. All right, and so if you plug this into the calculator accordingly, you get 38.4 grams of naphthalene, okay? So that, we know the mass that goes here. I told you what's the heat of fusion in calories. That's this, 35.7 calories per gram. So I'll put that here, okay? And so when we do that, um, when we put that all that together, all right, so the heat is equal to 38.4 grams times, remember we're trying to do this in calories, times um, 35.7 calories per gram. So we can see our grams cancel out and all that we're gonna be left with is calories, which is perfect, that's what we wanted, right? All right, so 38.4 times 35.7, we put this in the calculator and we get 1370 calories, all right? And so that's how much calories or how much energy it will take to, um, to melt naphthalene if you were to have 0 0.300 moles of it. So this is an example how we could use um, phase change calculations.